for self-care ideas for teachers and parents. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Charlotte with Colorful Teaching for you. If you're a teacher or a parent, you know that your life is all about your kids. It's really hard to separate yourself from your job as a teacher or a parent. So as a teacher, especially before I became a parent, my life really did revolve fully around teaching. So in the morning, I would think about what I needed to work on and anything I needed to make improvements on. When I went to school, my day was all about my kids. After that, I focused on photocopying and prepping for the next day. And then on my drive home, which is a long drive, I would be reflecting on what changes I needed to make to the following um, for the following day because you never know what children need to work on or they didn't really understand. So I would be making improvements on that. When I come home, I'd be making notes and making changes and just working through the evening. Now, I'm a parent, so that's not possible. I the whole first part of the day is what I do, still do, but in the evening I focus on my my sons, and then in the night I make those changes that I need to make um, for my class. So really, I I am essentially working all day, aren't I? <laughs> Self care becomes a time where we don't even think about ourselves because. Who has time for for self-care when we've got so many little ones that are dependent on us? But if we don't take that time, our bodies are going to force us to do that in the form of getting sick a lot, right? So we need to take a little bit of time. So what we're going to be talking about today is how do we find that time in our day? It's not just what do we do, because I'm sure you already know, but it's how do we find that time in our day to be able to have um, a moment, just a moment to ourselves, okay? So the first one is called time block. So here what you're going to do if you're a teacher is take about five minutes at the beginning of the day. Um, when I go to school, I like to just have a little bit of like a second breakfast almost, um, just so that I can um, calm my nerves down and just focus on being present in that moment, okay? As a parent, I, you know, our instinct is as soon as our baby's gone down for a nap or our child's gone down for a nap, we go and we do our chores. But as soon as we do that, we are not slowing down and we're just rushing, 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 rushing. So we, it starts to feel overwhelming after a while and we do snap a little bit, don't we? So instead of doing that, I like to just make a cup of tea for myself and I like to take five minutes just to calm myself down, rest my mind, be by myself first, and then I go in and do chores or record or whatever it is that I need to do after I've had my five minutes, okay? The second step is called sacred moment. Now, I did talk about um, you know constantly going in and getting overwhelmed and maybe snapping at your kids. I mean, it does happen, especially when your child is acting out. Right now, I've got a child who's in the toddler uh, stage, and you know the toddler stage is all about me, me, me. No, no, no. Testing boundaries, right? So if you are, even if you're a teacher, you're going to have kids who are testing boundaries and you are going to snap. So one of the things that I do right now um, in my class or even with my son is when my child needs to have a timeout, um, I like to participate in that timeout. So you can either participate alongside with your child or actually be there with your child, okay? There's two distinctions here. So a lot, um, the first one is where you can, um, where he has he gets a timeout and you, well, and I get to do something else where I get to do a timeout on the other side um, so that we're both spaced out because sometimes you need that separation, especially if you've got teenagers. Um, but if you, what I do right now because he's very little is I actually do it with him. So he sits or stands and I sit or stand with, we do it with each other so that we, I can show him um, that I'm also frustrated and it's okay to be frustrated. But how do we use our time wisely while we're in timeout? It's not just sitting there in isolation because honestly, sometimes timeouts get a bad rap for isolating kids. And there's probably a time and a place for it. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm not guilt tripping you into anything. You are the parent or the teacher, your class, your home, you do as you, you see fit. But for me, um, I because he's my son is so young, or I, and I also teach younger children, I, um, I do it with them. With the older kids, I do it, we do it separately. <laughs> but for the young ones, I sit with them and we um, deep breathe together. And then eventually once the timeout is over, we talk about what's going on. 
but the deep breathing allows me to show my son that this is um, an important time. Let's use this time wisely to calm ourselves down so that when we get together and talk, we, we have something we can talk about. We, we can let out those emotions, but in a rational way rather than screaming at each other, right? So this I call a sacred moment. It gives you another way to take care of yourself. Okay, the next one is get support. So a lot of the times we find that it's just, um, we have to take care of everything and everyone. But it's okay to ask someone to to, um, to to help out. So in this case, if you're a teacher, perhaps collaborating with someone so that you're not planning every single lesson by yourself, but working together to save some time and effort. And also, if you need the bathroom, as teachers know, we have you know recess, first recess, second recess, and then at the end of the day or the beginning of the day. It gets to be too much. And if you're going to do this for years on end, man, that's not healthy. So you want to be able to, if you can find a teacher that's, you know, helping a child one-on-one, -on -one, that's not one of those kids that runs away, you know, if they are able to manage it, maybe they can come into your classroom and they can help uh, watch over your class and their student for a few moments while you go to the bathroom and come back. If you're a parent, um, ask somebody to watch over your kids for an hour or two so you can go and do something that you enjoy. Maybe it's taking a class. Maybe it's um, going out with some friends. I mean, I just recently went out with friends and I, and I haven't seen anybody in so long. Yes, my, my little one is um, an infant, so I had to take him with me. But my older one is a toddler, so I had him with my with my husband for a little while so that I didn't have to be running after both children and thankfully I timed it so that both of them were napping at the same time. So you want to be able to have a little bit of time um, to yourself so you don't go completely berserk, okay? So, and it does happen over time. You start to resent people if you don't have that time. So please get that time for yourself. The fourth section is be specific. Now, if this is something that if you're not sure what to do and you want something specific to do during your you know moment to yourself, um, I've got a free resource that you can check out. Check out the link in the description where it says full episode. Go to actionable step number four and click the, um, the link or click the, the image and you'll have um, a free resource there to give you step by step what to do. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I hear my son is waking up, so I'm going to go get him. In the meantime, thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful time on to yourself. And in the moment, remember to create, experience, and teach from the heart. Take care, my friends. Bye.